All right, everyone, welcome back to Sons of the Forest. Now, today I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently than I normally do because when I first recorded this one, I messed up. I changed a setting and didn't check it, and it basically destroyed my audio quality. The game audio is fine, but my microphone was horrible. So essentially what happened is the night before, uh, we had an invasion of all the little mutant babies and I took care of them. And then the next morning, as I was trying to explain my plans, we ran into this guy. So we got some trouble right off the bat from the cannibals, of course. Virginia decided to help out with a few shots and we spent a little bit of time fighting these guys. And this guy right here ended up having a bunch of spears on him, which gave me the idea a little bit later to build a storage for all the spears that we were going to have so that we could grab them and throw them whenever we needed them for whenever the cannibals or mutants invaded our camp. But I was able to take some high ground. Virginia took care of most of the cannibals. I was able to take out the last big one with the bow and arrow here. And once I got all my arrows back, as well as a few skin pouches from these guys, I moved on to talk about the plan for today. And the plan for today was to actually head up northwest. There's a marker on the GPS that's showing that there's a GPS locator off in the northwest region of the map. So we decided that's going to be one of the spots that we go to, as well as a spot just to the west of that, a little bit southwest of that, because just off the coastal beach right there was another raft. And that raft, I was hoping, would have a pistol for us. But before we did all that, I was able to put the stick holder together. And on top of that, we picked up a note, an episode or two, or actually rather an email, that showed the map itself with two locations circled on the north and south side of the map talking about boats that's where they came in and who they were i wasn't sure so i wanted to go check that out explore that see what that was all about but before we decided to take off i wanted to put together this firewood holder or firewood rack rather because i completely missed it before it was actually right below the spear holder in the notebook so i was able to find that and all it took was a bunch of sticks so we were able to put that together pretty quickly and i chopped up a few more logs to create some more firewood to bring that inside And now while I was doing all of that, I tried to make some more bone armor and realized that we had a guest show up. Now, this is one of the Fingers mutants. I have no clue how we got there. Just like the blind guy that we saw last episode, right at the end, they're just showing up. They're coming out of the caves. Why they're coming out, I have no clue. But I was able to take this guy out pretty easily, especially now that I know how to fight him. It's basically take the spear out, jab him in the knees, he'll go down and take a few more shots at him with the spear and make sure you have Virginia around because she's gonna fire a few rounds at him as well to uh, kind of soften him up for you. But once I killed him, I was able to cut him up, take a piece of his skin and then use that for armor. And after that guy was taken care of, what I wanted to do was throw down a shelf for some storage. Now you guys let me know to do this because it's actually a really good idea to throw off, just offload a bunch of the things in your inventory before you go off and explore. Because a lot of times when I'm finding all this loot, I end up being full on all the different things like batteries and skulls and flares and whatever else I need, grenades, C4 bricks, all of that stuff. So I wanted to put something together for that in order to throw everything on there and then as soon as we go out and explore, we can go and pick up a bunch more and then we can come back. We'll always have a bunch of extra items, a bunch of extra tools, a bunch of extra crafting materials ultimately. So I was able to put that together and then I filled up the entire shelf until I couldn't fit anything else on it. And then once all of the normal housekeeping was done, I jumped on my glider and I flew basically across the island to our first location, which was this beachside 
down here. I ended up crash landing into the water because I wanted to skip the whole part where I could potentially get killed by a shark. Uh, but I didn't think about the part where I was going to drop my glider into the water. Luckily, I dropped it pretty close and I was able to push it towards the raft. And then I was able to get on the raft, grab the glider, and put it in my inventory. So we didn't lose it, at least not today. But once I got into the raft again, I was able to find what we were looking for, which was a pistol for ourselves. Because if you don't know, we already found the pistol, but we gave that over to Virginia because she has unlimited ammo and she can help protect us with it. Once I got out of the water, right on the beach, there was one of our fellow co-workers, we'll call him. He uh, left some things for us, so we were able to take whatever he had there and continue forward. Now onto the next location, the GPS locator that we saw on our map. I stopped in the stream for a little fill up of water. Now that water is going to be dirty even though it came from a stream. Well, I guess because it came from a stream. But we're going to have to bring that back to camp and boil that at some point. Now on our way to that GPS locator, I did run into some cannibals. I'm trying to avoid them. I know I say that every single time, but I am trying to avoid them as much as I can. Because I don't want to make them any more mad than they already are. They are showing up in our base every single night every single day it seems like at this point them as well as mutants now mutants i don't think i can do anything about kind of not making them mad i think they're already just mad they're coming out and they are trying to get us i don't think i can really stop that or slow that progress down so we're just dealing with the mutants as they come and same with the cannibals I, I, they're pretty mad at this point I don't know what else I can do to stop them from coming. They're just going to keep showing up. They're going to keep leaving these trophies, these heads on sticks, these bodies on sticks around our camp. And we're just going to have to fight them as much as we can. We should be setting up more traps, though I did not get to that in today's episode. But we ended up finding the GPS locator. Well, at least we found this grave where it was located. So I started digging this. And kept digging. And kept digging some more. Up until we started getting harassed by the monkey men as well as a bunch of cannibals that kept showing up. I tried to take out as many of the cannibals as I could because they would not leave me alone. But I was able to take them out. And from there, I went back to digging in that grave and then realized I was digging on the wrong side. So no matter how much digging I did, I was never going to get to what we were looking for until I switched sides. But once I did, we found this. This is not what I thought was going to be here. Well, I didn't even know it was going to be here. So I'm really glad that we were able to find the shotgun and I was going to give it to Virginia right away but ended up deciding against it at least for a little while because I really wanted to use this thing. Now I don't know if we can find a second one but if we can then I can have her use one and then I'll also have one myself and we will be two unstoppable forces. Now Virginia tried to lead me somewhere so I decided to follow her and then she just kind of stopped. I don't know if she just lost interest or what. I couldn't find what she was trying to show me. So what I ended up doing for the night is putting down camp and I attempted to go to sleep until I woke up to these guys, which was essentially the perfect opportunity to test out my new shotgun. And man, is this thing an absolute beast. Now you might notice that one of these guys is wearing a gold mask. Now it turns out that if we 3D print a mask or if we find another mask, we can actually use that to kind of protect ourselves against some of these cannibals. I think we can kind of show up at their camp and as long as we put our mask on, they won't attack us. I, that's kind of my basic understanding, but I don't have either a real mask or a 3D printed one. So I just went to sleep for the night, left all the bodies there, had a few bites to eat from our dried meat that we got from the drying rack and a couple of energy drinks to start the morning. And then right as I was about to leave, I found that the cannibals didn't completely leave last night. They left some uh, some signs for us, letting us know that we are still being watched. From there, I kept walking a little bit further, found another little camp, and just looted that up. We found some 9mm ammo, some energy drinks, some energy bars, things like that. And of course, we found a dead body, unfortunately. Uh, we find a lot of those around here. Now I planned on just beelining it straight to the northern beach, 
where that email let us know is where those boats drop some people off. But along the way, I found another grave site. Now it wasn't anything crazy. We didn't get any new weapons, new tools or anything like that. We just found some kind of basic crafting materials, some rope, some tape, things like that. So I ended up digging all of these up, got all the supplies in there and then continued on with our trek. And once I landed around the northwestern part of the island, I saw a red flare up ahead. Now, I had seen one of those in the past, and basically what that meant is there is someone that is alive there, but only up until we get there. So it was one of our team members that was there. He was waving the flare. Unfortunately, he did not make it. But he left us something pretty darn cool. So his death was not completely in vain. We now have this awesome machete. Once I picked that up, I did a little bit more looting. We found some stun gun ammo, some nine millimeter, some ramen noodles. And I'm not picking up this pot because we already have a cooking pot. We can only carry one at a time. But because we emptied off some of our stuff on the shelf back at the base, we were able to pick up a lot more things, including some more medicine and some solar panels. Now, as I wrapped around the island, I passed by another cannibal camp, but I didn't want to mess with those guys, so I just kept moving forward into the blinding light. Because out here, when it's snowing and it's sunny, it's impossible to see when you're looking in the direction of the sun. I don't know what it is, but we were able to push past that. We found some MREs, and we kept going, and we found a couple of boats. Now, exploring the boats was, uh, it was a little bit creepy, it was a little bit fun, but I had a theory as I jumped in and saw this kind of wreath here. It looked like something the cult members wear and that they would have. So I theorized that that was probably one of their boats. And as I dove in a little bit further and kept exploring, I didn't find a whole lot of loot, but I did find some clues as to who owned this boat. Now that GoPro basically proved what I theorized earlier is that the cult members owned this boat and that's how they got here. So I don't know if the cult members were just really wealthy people and they didn't have much going on, why they ended up joining this cult, but I found this really weird kind of creepy painting or drawing on the fridge. I didn't know what to think of it. It, it doesn't look like anything to me. But then I did find this note as well that says, Silas, the entrance will be in the Puffton's home. Make sure you close the gold door after you enter Ivan. So it's marking a location on the east side of the island, which I haven't been over there at all yet. So I think at some point in the future, I'm not sure when, but I think at some point we're going to find our way over on the east side and in that location. But the thing is, is I'm just not sure if I have the skill just yet to fight a potentially big fight. I don't really know what to expect over there, but I know it's not going to be good. But after I found that note, I ended up leaving the boat. I found a couple pieces of rope on the top, and then I went off to the right where there was another boat that was crashed in the beach. Now, in this boat, we found a little bit more to the story as well. So there's obviously this bloodied cult member right here. I wasn't sure, is this something that he did to himself, or is that something that someone else did to him? To me... It looks like something someone else did to him because I don't know what these cults, they end up doing it to themselves all the time. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm trying to stay mostly YouTube friendly here, but sometimes they do it to themselves. What I find out by going a little bit deeper into this boat is it was definitely done by someone else. But I go down here, I find another note that says Silas, blow it up, blow the wall right out. You'll be able to sneak in. Everyone else will be at the party, sneak right in. Ivan. So the party that it's referring to, I believe is in the big dining hall. We were able to find the dining hall, I think either last episode or the episode before, I can't remember, but I didn't want to go in there because I expected a big fight in there and I just wasn't ready. I didn't have the weapons. I didn't have the ammo. I didn't have the skill. I don't know if I'll ever have the skill, but I didn't go in there and it kind of left me conflicted. I didn't know, and maybe you guys can help me out with this, but I didn't know if I should go to the dining hall first and then go to the Puffton's home 
or if I have to go to the Puffton's home first and then the dining hall, I really don't know. But after I put the note down, I found this book called The Realm Beyond by Derek Seaside. It didn't really tell me a whole lot. I did see these weird drawings of crosses and things like that on the fridge, and I did find a pair of pink pajamas, which I was hoping to put on Virginia to kind of you know, cover her up a little bit. She's just out here in a bathing suit, maybe try and warm her up. But I did find this note here as well. And the note says ships are safe at the party, but that's not what the ships are built for. I don't know what that means, but I tried to get a little bit further ahead, I had to jump around all of these garbage bags. And the uh, note on this guy's chest says non-believer, and he is filled with knives. So that's how I figured out that the guy up on the top of the boat, he didn't do it to himself. These guys apparently did not meet the requirements for the cult, and they paid the price for it. Now on my way out, I did find one more note. It was the missing CEO, Edward Puffton and his family are still missing. Authorities are still looking for clues, a piece of newspaper, but it didn't really tell me a whole lot because we kind of already knew that. Now, once I left there, I decided to head home, but along the way, I found this little setup. I don't, I don't know what to call it. Um, it's a stick with one of our team members helmets on it found some slug ammo as well as some buckshot ammo but my question was was that set up by the team member and he just left the ammo saying hey we were here here's some ammo you're gonna make more use of it than i can i'm on my way out kind of thing or was it something that maybe the cannibals put together after they took one of our team members down but i decided to continue forward after that we found this hill i had to go north and so i took out my glider i jumped off the hill and I started gliding all the way home. Until I crash landed right here and then I had to start running home on feet instead of flying like I really wanted to do. But on the way, I found a stream and decided to build another bridge. Now, last episode, I built a bridge across another stream because I mentioned that I just want to make this place basically a state park or a national park where as we're going through, we don't have to keep jumping through the water. We're always going to have different bridges that we can use. Number one, just for utility and number two, just for aesthetics. I think they look cool, too. And so I ended up chopping down a few trees and I had a bunch of extra rope on me. So I was able to use that rope to make some rope bridges and I really like the look of these so like I said I chopped down a few more trees got this thing put together and I think it turned out pretty darn cool but of course we weren't completely alone that whole time as we were trying to put the bridge together we did have some company and I was going to try and take them out just with my spear or whatever other melee weapons I had, but uh, it was getting dark. I didn't want them taking off all of my armor and taking down my health, so I took out the Old Faithful, the big shotgun, and blasted these guys away. And just for fun, I decided to test out the stun gun here too, which I think worked. It seemed like it did, but they didn't seem like they got shocked. But since I had my fun there, I decided to take my shotgun back out and uh, blast them. And once those guys were dead, I was able to put together the rest of the bridge. And like I said, I think it turned out pretty darn cool. And once that bridge was finished, I decided to run home. I didn't want to sleep through the night. I just decided to run all the way back, even though it was completely dark. I couldn't see anything. I still had my GPS. So I made my way home and I went to sleep for the night. And now it's the next morning and what I decided to do is put together a fireplace within the cabin itself. And the reason for that is because I believe that if we go to sleep warmer and if we go to sleep with like a fire around us, I think that increases our comfort at night while we're resting and we wake up with more energy the next day. And more energy means more stamina and it's just an overall positive thing. But as I was looking through the notebook, we had some company. Now, this guy clearly wasn't here to mess around, so neither was I. I decided to take my shotgun out and go to town on him. Now, this guy was crazy difficult to kill, and I don't know how I would have killed him had I not had my shotgun. I was going to take my pistol out, but then I saw this grenade. So, I took out the grenade, decided to give it a try. He ended up running right over it as soon as it blew up, and it literally 
blew him to bits and it was one of the coolest things that I've seen so far. <laughs> but now that he was gone, I also noticed, of course I got sidetracked, I noticed that there was a rain catcher and so I decided to put that together. All that required was a bunch of sticks and a turtle shell and I picked up a turtle shell on the beach at some point so this was super quick and easy to make. And of course, you can tell winter is no longer here. And that kind of caught me by surprise. It went by so fast, but I guess time will go a little bit quicker when you do sleep through every night like I do. But either way, it is springtime and of course it's raining. So we're making perfect use of our rain catcher right off the bat. But now that that was built, I went back to the task that I had originally planned and I placed down the fireplace. Now that requires 42 large stones. Now I didn't think I was gonna be able to get this all done today, but I remembered that we have this large stone storage that Kelvin actually filled all the way to the top for us, and we have the large stones everywhere around here. But I got a little bit distracted by Virginia, and I decided to try and cover her up, but I didn't see any way to give her the pajamas that we had found earlier. I thought we were gonna be able to dress her in those, uh, but apparently not. Now she's just out here in a white, wet bathing suit, and I wanted to introduce a little bit of modesty to her. I don't know, she could be embarrassed, but it's all she's got. I'm pretty sure we can dress her, but as far as I could tell, I could only put the pajamas on myself. Now, I'm sure I could give it to Kelvin, and he could wear it, but I don't want to embarrass him more than he already embarrasses himself. So I continued on building the rest of the fireplace, and it honestly didn't take long at all, especially with all of the stone that we had stored up. And once I was able to put this thing together, I thought it looked pretty darn good. Unfortunately, I don't see any way to add a chimney on top of it, so it doesn't look perfect. But either way, I was able to put a fire in the fireplace, of course, and then we had all of this dry firewood right next to it very conveniently, so I'm glad I was able to put this down as well. So we added the firewood to the fire, made it as large as we can, and I think it looks pretty darn cool. And once we had all of that completed, I decided to call it a day. We actually got a lot done. We put together the firewood storage. We put a fireplace within the base, the cabin itself. We put a spear holder down. I ended up giving Virginia my shotgun. So now she is double the trouble. She's got a pistol and a shotgun to absolutely unload on all of our enemies. I think the next steps, maybe next episode, maybe we try and find another shotgun. Again, I don't know if we actually can or not, but ultimately I think the main goal for next episode is to not mess up the audio and have to do all of this over again. But uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this was a really short one. I hope I can put together something that can still be somewhat entertaining even after I make a big screw up like I did. But uh, guys, if you enjoyed, let me know. Throw a like on the video, subscribe if you wanna see some more. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you all in the next one. Later.